at Cloudnext, and I'm here with Darren. Thank you so much for being here with us, Darren. So glad to be here. Thanks, Debbie. Wonderful. And he's going to talk to us about the next frontier of generative AI at Google Cloud. So, Darren, can you give us a little introduction of yourself? Sure, absolutely. So I have, I think, the best job in show business. I get to lead our startup business for Google Cloud. So my job every day is to work with a lot of different teams to create a pretty incredible experience for founders. And that's founders all the way from getting out of college, building a prototype, all the way up to the biggest AI model companies that are being built. So absolutely incredible and thrilling role for Google. Wow, I would agree. You're, you're kind of there at the cutting edge. Everybody who's starting out. Exactly. That's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the reasons why we love what we're doing at Google is we're a company on a mission, but we also believe every founder that we're meeting with is on a mission and they're laying everything on the line to be successful. And so I would say it gives us a unique opportunity to realize that this isn't just a business for a lot of these founders. They are truly committing almost everything they have. And that's a responsibility that we take really seriously. Wow, oh, I love that. You got to respect them and, and help them out. Okay, so highlight for me, what are some of these groundbreaking uh, generative AI possibilities that are coming with Google Cloud and that are here? Yeah, so there's a few things that I think are really coming to life here at Next this week. So one, startups have been in the, in the DNA of Alphabet from the beginning, right? We're a company that gets founders. So what's been incredible is this seismic shift that's really happened from an AI perspective. Over the last 12 to 18 months, we found ourselves in a position where startup founders have been coming to Google Cloud asking for assistance around a whole slew of different things that we can talk through, right? Founders have had a lot of different options in the marketplace over time, but what we found, frankly, is in some cases, founders were working with other hyperscalers that were either completely obsessed with a large generative model that were, was basically external and outsourced to them, or another hyperscaler that frankly was caught a little bit flat-footed when it came to AI. And what that has now created is this incredible gravity for Google Cloud, where we're leveraging our highly extensible and flexible AI model to allow these founders to enter the ecosystem wherever they may want. And so over the course of the time that I've spent with founders this week, I've been talking about chips and infrastructure and the incredible innovations happening there, talking with startups at the model level, talking about really how are they going to leverage large and small and highly specialized models to create incredible outcomes. And now more than ever, the application layer, thousands of startups coming to life that are going to leverage chips and models to do things that we've never even thought about before. So it has been the most high energy, the most productive, and I think the most fun next that we've had in a really long time. Oh, wonderful, I love to hear that. And it sounds like you're getting really in the weeds with these people, you're talking details. So let's, what are some of the most significant, I guess, challenges or yeah, difficulties that our you know, startup customers are facing and how can we help them? Yeah, it's a great question. So if I think, first of all, at the model level, there's a lot of attention in AI on models and these startups are coming into play and trying to assess where can they add value. And so the role that we play in Google, which is a very unique and differentiated position, frankly, is we're not forcing them down one path or another, right? With our infrastructure and our technology, we're able to allow them to create their own models through the power of our stack. We're able to allow them to use our own first party models to create great outcomes. And we're even able to expose them to open source and third party models. And so founders this week have consistently been reiterating that the fact that we're so differentiated but we're also so flexible is giving us a level of entry and competitive advantage that is really, really powerful for them. So the model layer conversation is exciting and frankly, kind of minute one of the Big Bang, we haven't even begun to see what that's going to become. I think some other conversations that have been excellent is these companies that are building either models or applications are saying, how can Google Cloud help me be successful? And there's really two or three themes that we're bringing to life at Next. So one is great tech. We're obviously going to create incredible technology. Two, we're going to offer compelling credit programs to help especially early stage startups get on board and not necessarily take on the significant cost that could be associated with using the platform. But even more importantly than credits, they're asking us for human beings, so smart people that have done this before, that can help them learn lessons, not step on the same landmines, and help them move really, really quickly. Founders keep telling us that the most scarce resource they have is time. They can always raise more money, they can always hire more people, but if we can collapse time for them, then we're competitively differentiated, and we're doing that here at Next. And then lastly, go to market. So startup founders, once they build their product, they want to go win customers. They want to drive top line revenue. And again, while we're super differentiated in the platform, we are completely differentiated in how we're wrapping our arms around startups and helping them grow as businesses as well. So it's kind of a perfect storm in this seismic shift. We are so well positioned 
to again be that mission driven company that are helping founders accomplish their own missions as well. Yeah, I love this idea of bring us your great ideas because we know you have them and we will help you, we'll partner with you to bring them to life. Exactly. We'll do what we can because we believe in your ideas. Exactly right. Exactly. So I know you did a session here, maybe a few sessions here at Next, and one of them was a founder series panel. So can you talk to me a little bit about that panel and what, what went on? Sure, Debbie. Yeah. So the exciting part also of what we've been doing this week is we've been creating podium, podiums for these founders to get a level of exposure that they would have never been able to get before. And so the way that that's looked is a few hundred meters from me in the other direction is our startup lounge. It's three times larger than we've ever had at Next before. And there's actually 32 startups that are getting on stage in that lounge and either launching their business for the first time to 30,000 people or launching a new product. And so you can imagine the excitement and the buzz that's been happening there. We also have had a number of sessions where we're putting these AI founders on stage to talk about what they've learned. And so, for example, I had the opportunity to be in a session earlier today with founders from companies like CentML, OctoAI. These are individuals that are deep researchers that have now, as one of them said, a converted professor now into a CEO that are applying all of this research into real products. And what we're finding is a lot of the discussion is about technology, but interestingly enough, a lot of these sessions are veering away from tech and they're talking about how do they attract the talent that they want. We had a great conversation with a female founder about how lonely it is to not only be a startup founder, but to be a female startup founder in the wave of AI is a very lonely place. And we talked about what Google and others can do to show up with sponsorship and support around female founders to help them raise money faster and get the level of exposure that they maybe wouldn't have been able to prior. But you also have some incredible companies pushing the limits of what we're doing. So companies like Assembly AI doing incredible amount of training and inference down at a chip and model level where they're creating the next generation superhuman speech tools. Uh, so things again that even months ago were impossible, we're now seeing coming to life just to show you the speed of innovation. And one of my favorites, uh, a company by the name of Rad AI, is using our complete stack to bring a, a service to market that allows radiologists particularly to be able to do more effective, more highly productive and higher quality pre-cancer screening. So while obviously that's all about saving lives and the patient experience, it's also about the fact that radiologists are the number one highest burnout rate of any healthcare worker, interestingly. And so by leveraging Google Cloud, by using AI, by using our data stack, this company is able to provide a better capability to radiologists. They're making better decisions faster and they're saving lives as a result of it. So we constantly say to ourselves, Biology is not going to cure cancer. Technology in biology is going to cure cancer. And I think with the wave of AI, we're seeing that come to life in a real way. Yeah, I mean, wow, you mentioned so many awesome things. The female founder and how we can support them more. Just, I mean, just from talking to you, I'm excited about, you know, all of this new innovation and years of research of people just leading up to moments of now we can put it into you know, production, essentially. Exactly. And especially um, Rad AI, that's so awesome. That's really. I love it, you know, when you can see the impact of exactly. something that's being worked on so hard and says, Here, here's what we're doing, we're helping save lives. That's exactly right. Making it real for people is, uh, is where we are, and I think, again, you're seeing this at Next, where we've come through a phase of hype and interest and kind of what anticipating what could be. That anticipation is now converting into results, and that's the energy you feel in this room right now. Yeah, and it's great to say, you know, we're not replacing radiologists with AI, we're helping to make them more effective, which is amazing. It really is, like you said, technology and biology It exactly together. is. It's you know, AI and human in the loop. I had another session with the co-founder of a company called Runway, who is using AI in the creative process, right? Actually fusing AI and human creativity. And if there's one area of AI where there's a lot of concern, think of the recent strikes in Hollywood. There's a, hey, will AI actually be doing the creative process for us? And this company and this founder, incredible former professor from Chile, um, has created a stack of technologies on Google Cloud that actually enables essentially what he says, the democratization of storytelling. So he's finding that not only are creators leveraging the technology to create things quicker, higher quality using AI, he said his number one piece of awareness having now done this is an entirely new population of creators that never thought they could be creators are now bringing new documentaries and short films to life. 
So to your point, this is all real, it's tangible, we can feel it, but it's only minute one of the Big Bang. So we're gonna see where this thing goes. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I always say we're in the baby stages. Exactly Can't right. Can't wait to see where it goes. Maybe we'll be back here in 10 years talking again. Oh, I think so, <laughs> for sure. Well, on that note, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's such an interesting conversation. Yeah. And uh, have a great rest of your night. Thank you, Debbie.